Look, our new little tea guy Sinistra has absolutely beat the mid allegations and you are about to see why. This thing is absolutely insane. If you are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button and I'll give you a treat. In today's match we're playing against a fellow YouTuber, shout out to Just Weavinyl. he makes really good Wi-Fi battle videos over there, he's one of my favorite channels right now, and it's definitely going to be a tough match if we're playing this dude, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Alright, so he's going to end up leading off with the Don Fan, as I kind of expected, and I decide to toss out the Ambipom. I want to basically just do some pimp slapping, and then essentially get out of here for a better matchup. So, the good news is, what I can do is go for a fake out, and that's going to also break the Don Fan sturdy. I'll do a little bit of damage here, and I can kind of scout this thing out a little bit. It turns out to be Rocky Helmet, so my Ambipom hands are about bloody as shit, but at this point, I kind of just need to get out of here, uh, because Ambipom, with that priority, and its speed is super nice for the late game. So, I go for a little U-turn, I do take some more Rocky Helmet, but I figure, uh, since I am Silk Scarf over Life Orb, I, I don't really care how much health this thing has at this point, so... I decide now it's probably time to bring in the Sinistra. Now this thing, uh, looking at his team matchup, I actually have a really good opportunity to try to get this thing going here. It might be a little bit early at this point, but at least what Sinistra does is scares this thing out with a Macha Gacha. Um, and potentially grab some burns on a switch and I can start to get this thing going if possible So they do go for that stealth rock there, which is fine And at this point I am gonna go right for the matcha gacha over a calm mind I know that he does have some answers for this thing and I got to start whittling some stuff down So he's gonna end up switching into ogre now that ends up being the yan mega And this is kind of the biggest problem to my sinistra at this point So I go for that matcha gacha throw up a little gang sign and spin around and it's obviously not going to do too much to this Yen Mega. So, A, I don't have hazards up, and B, this thing is kind of just a problem to my entire team. I do not really have any switch in. So, what I decide to do here is I want to conserve the Sinister. That thing is looking really good for later on in this game, if I can at least handle this Yen Mega a little bit. And I decide to go into the Fortress, knowing that, you know, Fortress isn't super useful in this matchup. It does go for the Air Slash there, and two of those is definitely going to take care of me. And while I would have liked to set up some Stealth Rock, I don't have... Again, I don't have much that wants to switch into Yan Mega, so I let this thing go down, and in turn, I'm able to basically just grab a better matchup here for free, and I decide to go into uh, the Ambipom, knowing that, you know, he could just go right back into the Don Fan on a fake out, uh, but then I can essentially just U-turn and try to try to get some stuff going. So, Yan Mega, A, big-ass problem right in front of me, and I'm going to go for that U-turn expecting the switch. Uh, of course, his best answer to the Ambipom is just straight up Michelin, so... I'm able to get the pivot that I need to after taking a little Rocky Helmet damage. I'm realizing kind of my best bet is to just go into the Sinistra. I don't have a lot that's able to knock out Donphan at this point. And considering we've already seen this kind of situation play out, I want to see how he handles it this time. Um, so I'm going to go right back into the, the Matcha T. Now here's the plan. I'm thinking maybe since he's already seen me go for the Matcha Gacha here, potentially he goes for an over prediction, stays in and tries to hit me with like a knockoff. Uh, or something along the lines of that, and that's kind of what I'm hoping for here. So, here's the plan. I am actually Terra Normal, so I'm going to go for that, put a diamond in my T, and go right for a Calm Mind here. Now what that's going to do is, with the Calm Mind, I can ensure that I can live an attack from the Yan Mega, and then hit it really hard with a Shadow Ball. So, uh, I go for that Normal Terra, what that's going to do is get rid of my Dark Weakness if he goes for that knockoff, and also positions me really well against his uh, Typhlosion in the back. So. He actually ends up going for the Ice Shard, and that does literally nothing because I am max defense. And now with the Calm Mind, I am looking bulky on both ends, and this Sinistra is about to absolutely pop off. The Terra Normal, it puts me in a great spot because I know that they don't have any Fighting Stab on their team. Um, and now I'm not actually weak to pretty much anything they have. So with that defense that I've got, I'm in a fantastic spot. And I decide to go for the Shadow Ball here. Um, which is going to be able to take care of the Don Fan. So down that thing goes, and that's actually a pretty big defensive wall out of the way that opens the game a lot for Ambipom. Uh, but at this point, we're focused on the T, baby. I'm at like full health with a boost in special attack, special defense, and I'm naturally bulky as hell, kind of just ready to take on anything at this point. So they decide to go into the Jirachi. So Jirachi is a little bit of a problem in that it can kind of just do some flinch shenanigans. Goes for the Thunder Wave and actually ends up missing, which... Actually is amazing, Sinistra over here dip dodging, duck diving, and dodging, and I go for the Shadow Ball, not quite able to take care of the Jirachi, but there's truly not much that this thing can go for, plus I do still have uh, some definite tricks under my sleeve, or under my teapot, so uh, after some leftover recovery we are at full health, so this thing can decide to either paralyze me again, or try to get some damage, so I'm just going to continue going for that Shadow Ball, they throw a Meteor Mash at me, and the true bulk of the Sinistra comes out here. It does basically nothing. Meteor Mash absolutely shrug that shit off. Throw another Shadow Ball at this thing's face. And down goes the Jirachi. So that is a huge threat out of the way. 
And now they can basically decide to bring in whatever they want against the Sinistra. I'm still feeling pretty healthy, especially with that special defense boost. I know that I can kind of handle anything at this point. And we haven't even seen what this T is made of yet, baby. So, they're going to bring in the Gyarados. Now, this is a matchup that isn't great for me because this thing could start to Dragon Dance and be kind of scary. So, I'm going to bring out what this thing is built to do, and that is go for the Strength Sap. So, I predict the Dragon Dance, and I say you are not about to start boosting on me today, boy. As a, as a strength sap is not only going to lower this thing's attack, bring it back to normal, but it's also going to give me enough health uh, to basically heal from like full, even if I was at like red HP. So the drop in the attack there is just going to basically ensure that this thing doesn't have enough damage to knock me out, or even do around half. So now I can freely go for the Macha Gacha as they decide to just waterfall without the boost, not even going to do half because freaking defensive Sinistra is amazing. And I hit him with a little spinny McSpinneroo. It does do over half, which is amazing, and Macha Gacha also heals you. So, the best part about this thing's move is you can say, gotcha, bitch, I do actually get the burn, and unfortunately he actually has a, a Lumberry for that. But, that's fine, I've done enough damage to the point where another one kills, and it is an uphill battle against this Sinister right now. I am basically on top of the world and unkillable at this point, and the reason why the Terra Normal sets us up in a pretty good position, putting some rocks in the T doesn't normally seem like too good of an idea, but... Uh, he does have the Hisui and Typhlosion in the back, and without that thing being able to hit me with a Stab Shadow Ball, it's basically forcing it to have to use a Fire Move, and this thing's ability is actually Heat Proof, uh, so it reduces the damage from Fire Moves, and honestly, it, it, you're not going to be able to touch this thing. So, they decide to go back into the Yan Mega. This is going to be their best Special Attacker at this point, and that's kind of what they need to get off uh, on the Sinistra to be able to do some damage. So, the Bug Buzz comes in, and with the Calm Mind, I'm able to take it, but just barely. And that does allow me to throw a Shadow Ball at this thing, and I've got enough damage to knock it out. So, Yan Mega, again, one of the biggest uh, offensive threats on their side is out of the way. And uh, Sinistra is truly just out here doing the damn thing. After Leftover Recovery, I'm near half, and it is not over yet. We're still out here going to be able to do some Macha Bullshit. So, uh, in comes the Typhlosion. So, I was talking about this thing. It can't really go for... A fire move, I know that with a Calm Mind plus my Heat Proof ability, I should be able to take an attack from this thing. And uh, I can essentially just force it to, to go down. Scarf Typhlosion, one of the scariest threats in the underused here at this point. And he is going to go for this Terra. So, the idea for the Terra Grass is essentially that now my Shadow Ball is no longer super effective. And he just basically has to allocate as much resources as possible to try to whittle down uh, this Sinistra. So... Uh, he does go for the flamethrower, he is forced to go for that fire stab, and it does literally nothing. It does burn me, so we got some burnt ass tea over here, but it's not too big of a deal as a, a plus one Shadow Ball is going to be a two hit KO on this thing. And it doesn't look like he has quite enough damage uh, to knock me out with another flamethrower, which is amazing. You cannot, you can't, I'm just going to say you can't burn this tea, but I mean I guess you, you literally can burn it. You just can't do very much with fire attacks, fucking moral of the story. So. Uh, I am going to end up going for a Strength Sap here, just to see how far I can take this Sinistra, to be honest. But, it actually ends up getting a critical hit on the next Flamethrower, and down goes my absolute beastly cup of tea. So, we honestly were able to force him to use so many resources on taking out the Sinistra, that I should be able to clean up the game with uh, my remaining sweepers. But, it's not going to be as easy as we think, as he does have some pretty large threats uh, still in the back. So, I have to go into Ambipom here. With this thing being Choice Scarf, it is going to be faster than everything, and uh, he is going to end up saving that for later, because Typhlosion still is a pretty scary lad to have around, as they're going to bring in the Diplin. Not a Pokemon we have seen yet. I go for that Fake Out. It does pretty much nothing, because this thing is actually able to carry the uh, Eevee Light item, and it's actually a pretty large uh, defensive monster. He's just, he's just a straight-up Apple, but I go for the U-Turn. The reason for that is because I need to save the Ambipom. The Fake Out in the late game is going to be... Uh, basically my win condition, so I do want to conserve that, and now I can bring in the Okie Dogie. I go into Booger Dog, and uh, I have a pretty good matchup against Diplin, as I know it's not going to be able to hurt me that much. I switch into a Giga Drain that does pretty much nothing, and uh, this thing is weak to my Poison Stab, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm actually going to end up trying to go for a knockoff. I essentially want to get this thing's Eevee Light off of it, because without that, it's not going to be nearly as bulky as it should be, and I should have a good time with it. However, I actually forget that this thing gets sticky hold. It holds onto its item because my boy about sticky as hell, and it actually ends up missing the Draco Meteor. So uh, the miss is unfortunate there, but knowing Okie Dogie, I should have been able to take that at like 40%. So not a huge big roll, but honestly, unfortunate RNG. As now I go for the Gunk Shot, and I do connect, but <laughs> Diplin actually lives that, which is kind of in insanity. I, I did not expect that thing to live. Defensive Diplin kind of goes crazy, and it's able to fire off. 
uh, a Draco Meteor in the end, which puts me around half, uh, and now I just kind of finish it off with the Drain Punch, and I grab myself essentially some free Apple Juice. But it does go for a Soccer Punch before it goes down, just to do like one HP of damage, and uh, down goes uh, the Diplin. So that thing is an interesting Pokemon. I have actually not played against uh, a Diplin quite yet, but it's kind of a crazy Pokemon considering we don't have access to its evolution yet. Getting access to the Eviolite makes it super bulky and just kind of an interesting mod. So now they go into the Gyarados, and honestly I'm still very afraid of Gyarados, mostly because of the fact that this thing can set up a Dragon Dance, but uh, it ends up actually staying and goes for the Earthquake, and I actually live it with 5 HP, which is kind of crazy. Max HP Okie Doge is able to tank the hit, fire off a Gunk Shot, and down goes the Gyarados. So that was a pretty large threat. Had it started to set up the Dragon Dances, I could have. Been, I was definitely very afraid of that boy. But Okie Doge Booger Dog somehow is doing better than I expected, to be honest. My big ass tail able to take that Earthquake. And now they are down to their final Pokemon. It's going to be this Scarf Typhlosion, which is quite scary. He's got some flowers on his head, so he doesn't look that menacing. But uh, essentially, I just have to let Okie Doge go down. And this is the main reason why we decided to save Ambipom in the back. It's because even with Okie Doge going down, all I have to do is bring in the Ambipom. And a fake out with that self Scarf damage should be able to uh, to finish it off for me here. So, Handy Jobs comes in doing his uh, doing his little monkey sweep thing. I do come in on this Delta Rock successfully and a fake out should be able to finish the game off with that priority. So that is how this one is going to end. Obviously some RNG on my side, but honestly a super fun match. I did not expect Sinistra to absolutely pop off like that. And uh, sometimes you got to do it to him. Shout out to Jack, uh, amazing sport and overall really good Pokemon YouTuber. If you're interested, go ahead and check out his channel. You can also see his side of the match he has uploaded. And uh, thank you guys very much for watching. I will catch you next time. Peace out.